Good afternoon, Tuscaloosa and Internet World. How we doing today on a beautiful, beautiful Monday? It's Monday, July 3rd, the first Monday of July. A lot of you guys have the day off, but I'm not taking the day off. No reason for me to take the day off on the Joe Gaither Show right here on Bama Central at BamaCentral.com. You can watch us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, on Amazon, on Audible, wherever you get your podcast. We appreciate everybody who's taking a little bit of time out of their day and checking out the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central. We want to encourage you to listen to all of our other Bama Central Podcast. We've got our friends All Things Bama and Blue Collar Unplugged Podcast. I actually have to give a little shout out to my man Matthew Gibson from the Blue Collar Unplugged Podcast for uh, designing and executing a new new logo. You'll be seeing that on all the platforms here pretty soon. So I appreciate Matthew Gibson of Blue Collar Unplugged uh, designing and executing a, a new logo for myself. Our big, big thanks to you, Matthew, for that. I thank you so much. Make sure y'all check out Blue Collar Unplugged as they are breaking down all things Alabama basketball, especially as uh, dude, Alabama basketball is having a huge summer, a uh, very, very interesting summer. All right, so uh, what are we going to do for today? It's a holiday one Monday, and I appreciate everybody who's hanging out watching us. Tomorrow, we're going to hear from Caden Jones, a linebacker from North Carolina, committed to the University of Alabama in the 2024 class. I will reconfirm with Caden today, but we will hear from Caden Jones tomorrow on the program right here at 1 o'clock on Bama Central and on YouTube, everywhere you can find your podcast. But today, let's break down, let's break down the weekend. That sounds like a good plan. We'll break down the weekend. We'll figure out what everybody did over the weekend. I got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. Seven different notes, and we'll go we'll go through each and every one of those today on the show. You can jump and leave your comments on Facebook if you want to do that. I uh, appreciate everybody who's hanging out or watching us on the Facebook side of things. Oop, let me save that and make sure that gets scrolling. Excellent. All right. What do we want to start with, Joe? I want to start. Uh, I'll start with Jameer Grimsley. I'll start with Jameer Grimsley, a uh, cornerback out of Tampa, Florida. Corner, cornerback, not quarterback. Cornerback, defensive back out of Tampa, Florida. Jameer Grimsley commits to the Alabama Crimson Tide on Saturday evening, uh, giving Alabama t- 10 commits now in the 2024 class. Uh, so Alabama's up to 10 commits, and Alabama has uh, Alabama has two cornerbacks now. Two cornerbacks now in the 2024 class in J- Jameer Grimsley and Jalen Mbakwe. Two pretty good little corners. Uh, Jalen Mbakwe, obviously a five-star recruit right out of Clay Chalkville. And so we're looking forward to uh, to seeing what he will do. We'll see. We're looking forward to seeing what he will do here in Tuscaloosa. But this little segment and this comment is about Jameer Grimsley. Jameer Grimsley goes to Tampa Catholic down there in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. He transferred actually to Tampa Catholic this season. Uh, transferred out of uh, out of his other school, just right across town uh, into Tampa Catholic. Let me let me see what his what his old school was. Uh, excuse me. He went to from Tampa Catholic. Uh, Buford. Oh goodness, Beaumont. So, Jameer Grimsley, he's playing his first year at, at Tampa Catholic. So his last couple of years, he's been playing cornerback. Yes, right there. That's where it was. Uh, Bloomingdale. Excuse me. He's been playing cornerback and wide receiver in Bloomingdale in Tampa Bay. Right, right there in uh, Tampa in Florida. And last year, okay. So you look at his highlight tapes. He caught twenty five passes for three hundred fifty yards, three touchdowns, and ten games. He tallied what ten pass breakups. Uh, he, he tallied t- tallied a couple tackles. And an interception. Basically, you put on his huddle tape. You put on his t- tape from huddle, and that's really where you get a lot of uh, a lot of where you kind of figure out what the kid's going to do. What do I see when I look at his t- huddle tape? Uh, I see a very fast kid. Look, you look at his numbers last year. He ran ten what t- uh, ten eight four in the hundred meter dash, and he ran what twenty one seven nine in the two two hundred meter dash. So the man's got uh, got got speed, and he's got long range speed. So that's a that, that's obviously a trait that you want to have on your football field you cannot teach speed uh, he plays corner he, he hit long strides long strides every time he got the ball in his hand 
hands. Uh, he was basically catching short passes, lots of screens, lots of short passes, and running for <laughs> outrunning the defense all the way to the end zone uh, in a couple of his highlights. The, the rest of the highlights I saw of him playing wide receiver was of him going up and getting the ball. He was really running a lot of nine routes, a lot of fade routes, and his quarterback would just give him opportunities to go up and get the football. I think Jameer Grimsley sh- has shown, at least in his uh, tape so far, that he can play the football in the air, whether he's playing cornerback or wide receiver. I believe he will play cornerback, defensive back here at the capstone. But he's got a, a nice, uh, he's got a nice ability to play the ball in the air right here. Uh, he's at least he's shown that at the high school level. Uh, I think that he, he's very physical for for a cornerback. He's come up in, in his highlight tapes and laid the wood in his highlight tapes. And I must must say highlight tapes because you never know. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen with a guy once they get to a, a bigger pond. Obviously, the, the, the young man is uh, moving it to Tampa Catholic. He's moving to a little bit of a higher division school, better education school. Uh, he, he's improving his own, you know, he's improving his future, transferring to Tampa Catholic. Uh, you know how private schools do. Private school is going to go after the uh, going to go after the good talent in the area, and so Tampa Catholic sucking in uh, Jameer Grimsley for for, for their the Crusaders. Uh, for his senior year. I don't know what he's going to turn into. I know that I'm more excited about Jalen Mbakwe than I am about Jameer Grimsley. But look, if Nick Saban is recruiting defensive backs and uh, T-Rob Tavares Robinson is is recruiting defensive backs, then you know I'm going to be pretty much in agreement, in agreement that that this guy's going to be a, a valued a valued member of Alabama's class. Look, if Nick Saban says this is a corner that I want, then I'm going to agree with Co- with Coach Saban. Now, I'm not sitting here saying I see a bad player. I don't see a bad player. I see a player that just doesn't necessarily pop out and stand out as film. He's 6'2", he's 6'2", 195. Uh, 6'2", 195. Is that where? Yeah, yeah, 185. Uh, and so – You've got nice, long, rangy, you know, long, rangy traits for a cornerback. You like his speed. You like his long range speed. You like his length as a cornerback. But I don't necessarily see superstar right there. But but let's let's all be honest. He's a junior in high school. Junior in high school. The man can still get out there and have a great senior year and and really develop into develop into a high level corner cornerback. He comes to Tuscaloosa. He plays for for two three five two three years. Gets into the NFL. Look, Jimmy Grimsley might be that next dude. I'm not saying that he's not. I'm not. I'm just saying I'm not sure that he's going to be a superstar member of this 2024 class. Now, Alabama is up to 10 uh, commitments in the 2024 class, and so we look at our uh, we look at our recruiting uh, our recruiting industry leaders, 24/7 Sports, on three rivals, this, that, and the other. Alabama has now come up to right about 22, 23, 24. When you look at the guys, when you look at the three uh, recruiting services, so are you worried? No, you're not worried. Don't be worried. This is exactly where Alabama's been over the last what three years? Over the last three, th- at least three years since the pandemic has happened. Nick Saban has slow played, has slow played his recruiting, and really he just made sure, made sure that the guys that he's going after are quality players. I think you've really, really seen that in the 2023 class, the current freshman. I think you see a lot of quality people as well as quality players. I think Coach Saban is doing a great job of vetting the players off the field uh and and so this is just a part of that you got 10 commits and i think you're going to continue to roll july is going to be a huge month july is going to be a huge month you see guys like Xavier brown casey poe you got you got guys like caleb odom committing william sanders we talked to william sanders about uh right, right about a month ago right here on the joe gaither show if you missed that you can check it out on youtube jamie french yes he's a 2025 guy but he's going to be committing this month demarcus riddick is a huge 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 look, Demarcus Riddick on July 26th. That's going to be a huge commitment with between Alabama, Alabama, Georgia, and really Auburn uh, for his for his services. The edge rusher. We, you remember we talked to Sterling Dixon, and Sterling said, "Oh, Demarcus Riddick. That's the guy that I'm trying to uh, convince to come to the Alabama Crimson Tide." So it's going to be a huge month. I want to caution anybody who's saying, "Oh man, Alabama's behind in recruiting. Oh man, Nick Saban has lost it." No, no, no. It's just the, the current pattern. It's just the way the coach has really um, adjusted his calendar post-COVID. I think that he has really, really uh, 
adjusted his calendar in such a way that to make July and August really, really, really important for the Alabama Crimson Tide team. You'll see the uh, you'll see the NCAA mandated dead period end on what June, July twenty four, July twenty four, and things will start to ramp right back up. Uh, ideally, Alabama is up to ten uh, is up to about fifteen or so commits by the time the mandated dead period ends, and coach can continue to roll. Look, I'm excited to see KJ Bolding. KJ Bolding goes to Twitter uh, pretty recently, actually. KJ Bolden, five star safety uh, out of Georgia, out of Buford, Georgia, announces he's going to commit on August the 5th. So coming up one month, uh, one month and two days, we'll find out about KJ Bolden, and we know that's going to be a huge, huge target for Alabama. KJ Bolden down to really Ohio State, Georgia, Florida State, Alabama, and Auburn. Your final five for KJ Bolden, and he's going to make his uh, make his commitment on uh, August the 5th. So, we'll, 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 you know, I, I think that's going to be uh, a very big commitment. Look, this next month is going to be huge for the 2024 class. Do I feel like we're in good position for him? Yeah, I do. I think Nick Saban, we'll just continue to follow the process, continue to follow every uh, follow the Nick Saban way. And at the end of the class, what, December 15, 16 or so, when the early signing period comes and February – What's that seventh, the first Wednesday in February when the, when the signing day officially hits? Alabama will be wrapping up a top five class once again. I'm very, very confident about that. I'm the most commonly used name on earth. Read a book for one. All right, let's keep it rolling here on the Joe Gaither Show. It's Wednesday, yet we had to dump the Andrew Luck Happy June because it is new, a uh, new month for July. So we're getting a new little bumper. We're choosing. The Muhammad, uh, we're, we're, we're choosing the Muhammad sounder from Superbad. Why? Because the Alabama basketball team is about to probably bring in its second Muhammad in, uh, for, for the upcoming season. And so you're going to have two young men on the Alabama basketball program named Muhammad. And our man, McLovin, reminds us. The most commonly used name on earth. Read a book for one. It is the most commonly used name on earth. Read a book for once. We cut out the the, uh, the the curse word in that clip just for all of our family of listeners, but we love super bad. Muhammad is the most common name on earth. And so Alabama basketball is going to have two Muhammads, Muhammad Diabati. And that was already in the books. That was already given. Muhammad Diabati already on campus, uh, already actually injured and have uh, got himself a knee injury, uh, a knee surgery, and expects to be back uh, full strength before the start of the season. The other Muhammad, Muhammad uh, Wagi, Wagi is who is who that's going to be. Hey, uh, the hello, Muhammad Wagi out of out of University of West Virginia came to Tuscaloosa this this weekend for an official visit. You all know what happened at West Virginia, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, somewhere right there? Bob Huggins gets fired. Bob Huggins uh, goes on a radio show and goes on a radio show and uses a homophobic slur and basically gets a, and gets a slap on the wrist, basically says, hey, man, you got to be on your best behavior. Well, that lasted about a week. Bob Huggins then gets arrested for a DUI and resigns from West Virginia. Well, what does that do for West for, for the West Virginia players? They all become immediately eligible for the transfer portal for what? I think thirty days is that what it is? Once your coach gets unceremoniously fired or resigns, I think they're eligible in the thir- in the transfer portal for thirty days. And really, all of college basketball came, uh, descended on Morgantown, West Virginia, and said, "Ooh, who are the good players? Who are the good players that you got?" I know Nate, Nate Oates has been working on a uh, uh, Toussaint the. The, the guard out of West Virginia, but we were able to get Muhammad Wagi. Yes, I know the, his name looks like Wagu on paper, W-A-G-U-E. Uh, I was saying Wagu earlier, but uh, as I was preparing for today, I heard a lot of uh, I heard a lot of highlight tapes and play-by-play guys saying Muhammad Wagi. All right, so Wagi is four points a game on three rebounds a game. Basically, doesn't play it. Didn't play a whole whole lot for West Virginia. Oh, uh, let's do a little quick math. What is two ninety seven? What is two ninety seven divided by uh, divided by twenty eight? That'll that'll give us an idea of how many minutes he was playing for West Virginia this past year. Two ninety seven. Divided by, do I say 28 games? Is that what he said? Is that what, yeah, divided by 28. He was playing about 10 minutes a game. 
so for for West Virginia. So not a bad not a bad contributor coming off the bench, uh, playing ten minutes a game, averaging four points, three rebounds a game. And what do I see in Muhammad Wagi, Mister Six Foot Ten, Two Hundred Twenty Five Pounds? Honestly, it may just be the haircut, it may be the body size, but to me, I see I see Keon Am- uh, Keon Ambrose Hilton. When I see uh, when I saw some highlights out of Muhammad at, at Weggy, now I saw a more skilled. I saw a more skilled Keon Ambrose Hilton. Uh, you guys remember Keon Ambrose Hilton came to Alabama what two or three years ago? Uh, was one of Nate Oates' first recruiting classes. Lasted a year or two and hit the transfer portal. Big body guy, not really much of a shooter. Nice rebounder, physical physical player down low. Uh, I see that. I see these uh, these traits in Muhammad Weggy now. Do we? Al does Alabama need Wagi? No, I don't know about need, but you absolutely want the front court depth for that, that Wagi will bring. Wagi. Now, look, we, we we've highlighted on this show before Charles Bediaco's departure, Noah Clowney's departure. We've highlighted kind of the uncertain nature about the front court over the last three months. And Nate Owens has gone out and done an amazing job, an amazing job bringing in Grant Nelson and and, and really uh, getting Jaron Stevenson to reclassify into the class uh, to fill two spots in the front court. Muhammad Wagi would be the last piece, would be the solidifier, would really be the piece that that really clinches everything up in the front court. And, and re, re, so I'm excited. Do, do, are you going to get a three point shot out of him? No, you're not. The man did not take a single three pointer all year last year. Get that in your brain. It'll be fine. He's just going to be a rebounding machine. He's going to be putting up. Uh, he's going to be putting put, putting up second chance points. He's going to be protecting the rim now. Will he be protecting the rim as well as Charles Bediaco is able to? No. Uh, seven foot one, seven foot three versus six foot ten. A little bit different. A little bit, a little bit different. But I do think that Muhammad Waggy will be uh, utilized this year on the Alabama team. Now his uh, his transfer is not official. He was only visiting this past week, but reports lots of favorable reports coming out that Muhammad Waggy was enjoying his time here in Tuscaloosa, and so I'm excited. I think you bring him on. You bring him on you leave yourself one open scholarship for, for for a ball handling guard that might open up you know if something opens up between now and the start of the season I'm excited about this basketball team I know there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of weeks about how Nate Oates has really managed and uh, managed this roster and well where Alabama will compete in the SEC this season I I, I still say you know I know Kentucky is going to have a great season uh or will really have have is expected to have a great season with their with their team on paper, but oh yes, James, you already know where I'm going. Yes, James Ludeman's getting to my next segment here in just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think Alabama basketball is going to be competing uh, at a, at a high high level this coming year. And you bring in Muhammad Waggy, you bring in Muhammad Waggy, and I think you uh, just solidify the roster even further. Very very excited to uh, see his announcement to see whether uh, to see whether he's loved Tuscaloosa enough to commit his services here next year. I think he is. I think he will. And I'm uh, very, very excited to uh, to see that announcement get made official. All right, let's uh, let's hit a pivot. Let's hit a pivot. The most commonly used name on Earth. Read a book for one. Absolutely, Muhammad is the most commonly na- used name on Earth. Let's do hit a pivot for tomorrow. Uh, we'll go back to Alabama sports in just a moment. I, I, like I said, I had seven topics. And now we burned two of them. Uh, we, we we will go back to Alabama sports in just a minute. But my man James Ludeman chimes in on the comments, and you can too on the Facebook side of things, talking about Joey Chestnut. And that is something I'm very excited about tomorrow. Yes, I will still do a live show tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I know it's 4th of July, but we'll be live. We'll have a lot of fun, but not before we watch the Joey Chestnut Show at 11 a.m. on ESPN tomorrow. The Nathan's Famous Fourth of July Hot Dog Contest. I cannot wait. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait. The gluttony will be on display. Joey Chestnut, will he break his record? Will he break his all-time record of 76 hot dogs set in 2021? You can watch it on ESPN at 11 o'clock. My man James Ludeman chiming in with the over-unders. Okay, total hot dogs eaten over under 74, 73 and a half. Under, uh, under 73 and a half is 105. Over 76 
and a half, you get plus 250. So if he breaks his record, you're getting really, really good numbers. Uh, and <laughs> Mr. James Ludeman taking the over. Okay, here, let, let's talk about this. First off, is it a sport? Yes. Yes, it's a sport. And try try to sit there and eat, uh, eat your heart's content and eat quickly. Um, you will get sick. You will get sick. It takes training. It takes training. It takes attention to detail. It takes strategy. Um, it takes physical gifts. Uh, all things that kind of culminate, culminate and uh, fall under the definition of sport. Uh, so it's going to be, yes, I know, it's gross. Do not sit in the splash zone tomorrow. I, I would never go up to, what is it, uh, the, the, the Coney Island. I will never go up to uh, up to New York and sit in the splash zone. Maybe I'll sit behind it. Maybe I'll sit 15 rows back. But goodness gracious, I will not sit. Like, it is a gross event. It absolutely is a gross event. And is it worth it? Joey Chestnut has made himself into a millionaire due to his notoriety, and I think that that is awesome. I think he's a, one of the, oh, one of the most unique, weird, strange athletes that we have in in our country, and, and therefore I'll celebrate it just because of the uniqueness. But man. If he wasn't so special, if he wasn't so special and it was just a hot dog eating contest, remove the sponsors, remove the hoopla, remove all the social media, remove everything that goes around it. The only thing that you get for winning the event, you win the event, you get $10,000 and you get the mustard belt, the yellow mustard belt, the WWE championship belt. Now, the belt's cool. $10,000 is absolutely cool. Uh, t- 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 <laughs> oh gosh, the belt is absolutely fun, and I will never turn down ten thousand dollars. But you probably, like, I cannot imagine the pain. I cannot imagine the gut discomfort for days of uh, the after effects of the competition. Is it worth the ten thousand dollars? Now, Joey Chestnut, like we said, has basically turned himself into Mr. Hot Dog, Mr. Fourth of July. And because of that, he is Captain America in, in, in all of our opinions. Uh, but I'll encourage you guys to watch that tomorrow at 11. We will be talking about it. I will be flabbergasted tomorrow because that's just every year I'm blown away. Uh, one, one, year, one year, what, like four or five years ago, I – Tried to cook. I, I I cooked a dozen hot dogs, and I tried to eat a dozen, one dozen, and uh, was not able to, to to put down a dozen hot dogs. Now, granted, uh, had toasted buns and ketchup and all that stuff. Not like these guys and girls will be doing tomorrow. But uh, yeah, the seventy six, absolutely insane. Absolutely insane for Joey Chestnut's record. Uh, let's see, J- J- James Ludeman giving me a little research here. He went 70, 72, 74, 71, 75, 76, and 63. Uh, to basically, I think he's at, I think he's at a ten-time winner by now. So uh, Joey Chestnut. Amazing athlete. His athleticism will be on display tomorrow on ESPN at eleven a.m. And I encourage you guys to watch it. Get yourselves in the spirit. Get yourselves in the mood for 4th of July. Let's keep this bad boy rolling. It's commonly used name on Earth. Read a book for once. Read a book for once. You know who might need a book. Oh, Jamil Burrows. Jamil Burrows. Welcome back in to Football Talk. Out of my Football Talk. Jamil Burrows hits the transfer portal on, was it Friday? After the show, uh, Friday or Saturday after the show, I think it was Friday. I believe it was Friday uh, after the show, after I had concluded my portion of the show. Jamil Burroughs uh, reports coming out from our friends, Charlie Potter on three, Bama online. Uh, Charlie Potter reporting that Jamil Burroughs is going into the transfer portal. Golly, what a disappointing, disappointing conclusion to this story. First, it was you know we'll set you up here. Jamil Burrows two years ago was talked about. Oh, what a pass rush! What an amazing pass rushing ability. Tyler Booker, you guys know sophomore guard, has basically said, oh, he is a mean mother mother man out there on the football field. He can get it done. Rush the passer. Jamil Burrows hits the transfer portal and he tells people he's looking for more opportunities. Um, but Jamil, I'm sorry, like. <laughs> You're blowing your shot. You're blowing your shot right here. I mean, you already have blown your shot here in Tuscaloosa. Uh, and will, will will he be in demand somewhere else? Yes, he will. He's going to be in demand. Anybody who plays at Alabama is in demand elsewhere. But Jamil, we, we, we know from a couple of weeks ago, got, got into a skirmish. Got into a skirmish or altercation or argument with one Josh Chapman. 
one Josh Chapman, strength and uh, strength and conditioning assistant coach, who for, formerly was a defensive lineman here at Alabama. Josh Chapman's probably six foot two, three twenty five. Six foot two, three fifty. He's a huge man. He's a large man. He's no one I want to get into an altercation with. And it sounded like it was an altercation that absolutely should have been avoided. So it should have been avoided in in every situation. It sounded like Jamil Burroughs and some some uh, football players were basically roughhousing in, in in Bryant Hall. You know how guys do. No big deal. Uh, police gets called. Hey guys, is this roughhousing or is this real fighting? Uh, and apparently there was some 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 water pistols, some uh, electronic water guns, and Jamil Burroughs just did not like the uh, discipline that was handed out. Now, uh, what a waste. What a waste of talent. What a waste of talent it is because last year, going into last season, there was all kinds of talk of Jamil Burroughs really ascending and improving. Now, Jamil didn't really play as much as I would have expected last year, given all that talk. But the same talk arise this offseason. The same talk came came in the spring. Oh, Jamil Burroughs playing well. Jamil Burroughs might be, might be a big big time contributor on the defensive line. Now, he wasn't scheduled or expected to be a starter, but he was right there on that second unit. And you guys know, if you're watching Alabama football for five seconds, we're rotating defensive linemen all the time. So Jamil, to hit the transfer portal, quote, looking for other opportunities, that's a lazy excuse. That's a lazy answer. That's not the truth. You're looking for other opportunities. I mean, that's part of the opportunity. That's part of the truth. It's a little bit of the truth, but it's not the whole truth. Uh, What did they say? Nothing but the truth, so help me God. No, it's not the whole truth, Jamil Burroughs. Partly, you and the coaching staff ended up up finding each other, finding yourselves on each other's last nerve. Uh, And so, Jamil, wherever will you go? Georgia, Auburn, somewhere else in the SEC? I think it's too late to transfer in conference and stay eligible. I believe that deadline has passed. So I believe that uh, Jamil Burroughs will look outside of the SEC. And, you know, he's, he's going to be in demand. Is Alabama going to miss him? No. Maybe. Sorry, but no. <laughs> Let's just be honest with each other. No. It's going to be Jamarian Latham. It's going to be James Smith. It's going to be Damon Payne. It's going to be these kinds of players who are waiting in the wings for their opportunities, who are saying, you know, we are trying to do these things the right way, Tim Keen. And the, we're, we're trying to do the things the uh, the Alabama way. We're trying to follow the process. A lot of these guys I just hit were young guys, haven't had their opportunities quite yet. And so, no. Alabama's not going to miss him. It, uh, it, yeah, there you go. James is probably exactly right. Alabama, won't, Colorado might be an option. Uh, no, uh, Julian, Tex, he can go to Texas because they're not in the SEC yet. Next year, he can. Next year, that that rule will apply to Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, but yes, Texas is a viable option. Texas and Colorado, from our friends in the comment section, getting thrown out. I, I think he's going to be in demand. But Alabama is going to be just fine. Alabama is going to be just fine. And I think you're really going to be impressed by seeing James Smith this coming up season. Uh, just, just sucks seeing a guy, you know, not seize the moment, not seize his opportunity. Uh, and really, mm, it sounded like it, it, it sounded like immaturity. A little, honestly, it sounded like immaturity got in, got in his way. Look, I know I hate authority. I really do not like authority a lot of the times. But it is, um, it is. It is something I have to accept all the time. I accept authority from my bosses. I accept authority in this country. I accept authority. Like I, I don't love it, but you just gotta, get, you just gotta accept it. It's part of being an adult. It's part of understanding how to live in society, who's in charge, and how how that works. So, uh, Jamil, uh, look, Jamil Burroughs, I pull for you. I hope a little mature. I hope a little maturity sets in. Look, Alabama is not for everybody, and that is okay. Uh, we will see what happens with Jamil Burroughs going forward. Going forward as he uh, as he needs to find himself a new school. Muhammad is the most commonly used name on earth. Read a book for one. Okay, okay, we'll keep it going. I think I have one more football topic. One more football topic on the. Uh, Oh yeah, you yeah. I, I'll get to breaking down the football schedule uh, here here pretty soon. How many wins do I see Alabama? Look, I think it's a twelve game season. Twelve game season. So, uh, I, didn't I see the Vegas over under is ten and a half? Uh, look, I think it's going to be hard for Tennessee and LSU to come into to come into Bryant Denny Stadium and win. 
I think Alabama has a really favorable favorable schedule this year, and I am sneaky. I am sneaky excited about this football team. Even with the questions at the quarterback position, I think the defense is going to be closer to 2016, 17, 18, closer to really those three years, uh, 15 through 17. And I think the offense will kind of revert a little bit more to a mixing the ball around, not letting the quarterback, not making the quarterback do it all. I, you want me to put a number on it on July third? I will say, well, you got to throw in wins with SEC championship and playoffs. That's 13, 14, 15. Okay. I'll go could just because fifteen and zero is is uh, fifteen and zero is, is is too much crimson colored glasses. I'll go fourteen and one with the national championship. I think maybe you drop a regular season game, you get into the SEC title. Yeah, fourteen. Put fourteen. Yeah, LSU is the favorite. Yes, James, LSU. Oh gosh, is the favorite based on beating Alabama last year, winning the SEC West, returning their quarterback. They've returned a lot. Jaden Daniels. They are loaded this year. But I see coming into Bryant Denny Stadium being a little bit too tall a task. You know how Coach Saban is on revenge games. I don't. I don't see Coach Saban allowing Brian Kelly to come into Tuscaloosa and get revenge. I'm not quite sure that this LSU team 2023 is quite up to the same LSU team as 2019. But, yeah, I mean, LSU's going to be a challenge. It's going to be – I just have a sneaky feeling about Alabama. Maybe it's my bias. I just have the same feeling that Kirk Herbstreet's going to have and that you're writing Alabama off and so they're going to bounce right back. I think this team is not going to be one that you want to write off. This team is not going to be one that you're going to say, oh, they just don't have it anymore. I think you're going to return to the discipline. The penalties that you've seen over the last two or three years, I think are going to dissipate. I think that's going to be the first area of improvement that Alabama fans will really notice right off the bat, that the penalties and the discipline is a lot better, as well as the tackling. I think the tackling plays into the discipline, and you're going to notice that very, very quickly, that the tackling and the penalties really have been improved over the offseason. All right, one more football topic before I go. I got a football topic and two basketball topics, I think is where we're at on the Joe Gaither Show right here on a Monday. Big thanks to everybody listening to us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, everybody hanging out with us on Spotify, Apple Music, or on Amazon. We appreciate everybody checking us out on BamaCentral.com. Make sure you read all of our friends, Austin Hannon, Blake Byler, Katie Windham, Edwin Stanton, Chris Walsh, right there on BamaCentral.com. We appreciate everybody checking out the website covering all things Alabama. Let's talk about Perry Thompson. Perry Uno Thompson out of Foley High School. Yes, we started the show with recruiting. We're going to circle back to recruiting just for this factor, just for this topic. Perry Uno Thompson announces on Twitter that he is going to participate or go to Big Cat Weekend. You don't know what Big Cat Weekend is because you're an Alabama fan. That's okay. Big Cat Weekend is the huge Auburn recruiting weekend. All right, Big Cat weekend all right there down at Auburn. Perry Thompson, oh my gosh, are we going to lose him? Maybe. But that's okay. Stay out of the dadgum dude's DM. Stay out of his Twitter replies. You see him announce on Twitter, oh, I'm going to be participating in Big Cat weekend. And you see Alabama fans rush to fill up his comments. Oh, I guess your commitment doesn't mean anything. Oh, so much for commitment. Oh, that doesn't mean much anymore in 2023. Or all oh, these kids complaining about complaining about the man going to Auburn to, to have a good weekend. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I was an average Andy athlete. I was never recruited. But if I ever were, if I were a five-star wide receiver like Perry Thompson, I look, you best believe I'm going to go get, my, get, get, get myself into every experience that I can. Enjoy every experience that I can. If Auburn is inviting me to Big Cat Weekend, look, Auburn and Foley, not far away. Look, you're going to go there. You're going to experience it. It's no crime to go hang out at the, at the Cal College this weekend, hang out with Hugh Freeze. It shows the emphasis that Nick Saban is still putting on other wide receivers, uncommitted wide receivers in the 2024 class, Amari Jefferson being one of them, who we've also had on this program. Look, it's okay for these guys, these young men, to take their visits, to enjoy their recruiting. You only get recruited one time. You only get recruited at this level one time. Now, you can jump in the transfer portal and and be re-recruited if you want to do that. But you only get recruited as a five-star high school player one time. 
I got no problem with the man going to Big Cat Weekend. Now, do I worry about him trans uh, flipping to, to Auburn, flipping his commitment to Auburn and playing uh, down at the Cow College? Yes, I do. I do. We're, we're, gonna, we're honest on this program. I think that's a very real possibility. I think Perry Thompson's commitment to Alabama is shaky at best. Now, do I want Perry Thompson to be in this 2024 class for the Crimson Tide? Yes, you did. You bet your, your hind in I do. Absolutely. I think Perry Thompson is going to be one of the better receivers in this 2024 class. You know all of the comparisons that he's already drawing to Julio Jones. A lot of that is due to the Foley connection. But they're both big-bodied receivers. They're big-bodied guys. They play kind of a similar style still a similar style game. I would love to have Perry Uno Thompson here in a crimson color uniform. But stay out of these guys' DMs. That's just not the right way. It's just not the right way to represent Alabama. It's not the right, right way to represent yourselves as Alabama fans. It's not the right way to represent yourselves as really college football fans. Look, we know it. be all end all when you want them all to come to Alabama. We want them to dominate for the Crimson Tide for four years, go to the NFL, have themselves great careers, but we want them to win four national titles right here, right here in Tuscaloosa. That's just not going to be the case. It's okay if Perry Thompson flips to Auburn. Does it stink? Yes. But look, we all know who our, our coach is, Nick Saban. We all know who Nick Saban is really the, the top coach in college football. If you want to debate with Kirby Smart, fine. No big deal. But look, he's right there, 1-1-A. One, one and we're still recruiting at such a higher level, such a higher rate, that if you lose Perry Thompson, we're past the point as Alabama fans for of fretting over one recruit, of a lost recruit. And so, and so look, I'd say, Perry, have fun at Big Cat Weekend. Go tell Hugh Freeze that uh, kiss my grits. Go tell Hugh Freeze to kiss your grits because you're going to Alabama and you're going to dominate the Auburn Tigers. I still think he's going to come to Alabama. Am I a little concerned about the flip? Yes, I just said that. But... Look, stay out of their DMs. Let these young men enjoy this time. Let these young men go through the process, figure themselves out, understand their own wants, their own needs, what schools will service those those wants and needs the best. We all know what Alabama presents. Great education, great opportunities for the NFL, great opportunities to, to play for national championships. Those are all great things, but they're not everything to every player. And so Perry, along with every other top recruit, is going to have to weigh what the, what really matters to them. And so Perry, look, have fun at, at your Big Cat weekend, whatever. All right, let's keep it going. I got two basketball topics. I got two basketball topics to get into. Is the most commonly used name on earth. Read a book for one. Two basketball topics, and they're both kind of in the NBA professional ranks, but they're Alabama-related. First, basketball topic, our man Herb Jones. Herb Jones over the weekend had his – Contract extension had his team option basically declined by the by the New Orleans Pelicans. Why did they decline his new his team option? Not because they wanted to get rid of him. No, no, no. They wanted to re-sign him. Herb Jones, our man from Greensboro, Alabama, man, right down the road, Greensboro, Alabama, four years contract signed a four year contract worth fifty four million dollars. Herb Jones. Well done. Well done, sir. Just absolutely uh, ecstatic for you. Ecstatic for her because, well, first, what a hard worker. What a, what, a, what a hard worker. He comes to Alabama. He comes to Alabama really as a defensive specialist. No offense in his game. Can't, let's be honest. Had terrible handles. Had a terrible shot. And over four years, over four years here in Tuscaloosa, yes, when two coaches, he develops into – Develops into a second round draft pick. Yeah, a lot of that's due to his own hard work, and a lot of that's due to his character. Some of that's due to Avery Johnson, and some of that's due to Nate Oates. But my man just works his tail off because and he and he improves what he was already good at, the defensive side of the floor. He gains a handle and he gains a, a semblance of a shot. What a testament! To hard work is Herb Jones. What a testament of Alabama basketball is Herb Jones. He is basically the quintessential Alabama basketball player, really, over the last 10 years. I guess 10 years prior to that, you probably might go Trevor Relliford or Jermichael Green. But in these last 10 years, it's got to be Herb Jones. Has to be. 
Sure, I guess you're going to say, uh, I guess you'll say Colin Sexton gets in a little bit of that conversation. But Herb, with his longevity here in Tuscaloosa and his overall contribution, the double na- the, the, the double SEC championship, the revival of the program under Herb Jones, the one-handed free throws against LSU, just the legacy that he leaves, and now to get paid, to get paid at a very high rate, four-year, $54 million dollars. And if you know anything about Herb Jones, he's probably going to put all fi- he's probably going to put fifty three and a half million dollars into the bank and put it in the savings. And he's probably just going to live off of just little bitty parts of that contract, just because Herb still uh, still that same old guy from Greensboro, Alabama, living uh, below his means. Very thankful, humble guy. And, oh, uh, gosh, it couldn't have happened to a better player. It couldn't have happened to a better person. And I am just so thankful that really uh, probably Alabama's best representation in the NBA right now, save for Jermichael Green, is getting paid at a higher rate. Yes, I know Colin Sexton got paid huge last year for the Utah Jazz, but I think Colin, in my opinion, is like two. Herb one, Colin two. You know, Brandon, Brandon's probably three right now because Brandon just started in the NBA. Uh, but yeah, Herbie, the, the, the best representation of the Alabama Crimson Tide way of the process of blue collar basketball. And he gets himself a huge contract over the weekend. And I'm just so proud of him. So, so proud of him. All right, one more basketball topic and then one more off-the-wall topic, and we'll close it down for the day. Big thanks to everybody for watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. I got my friends James Ludeman and Julene hanging out in the comments, giving us some comments on the day. You're welcome to comment on any of the sh- on any of the topics or bring your own topics if you want to do that. Let's talk about Brandon Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandon Miller last week got himself drafted. We already talked about that. Uh, but if you're looking for entertainment tonight, if you're wanting something to watch this evening, you can see Brandon Miller for the first time in a Charlotte Hornets uniform. You can see him in a Charlotte Hornets uniform against Victor Wembanyama, the number one versus number two overall draft picks. will go head-to-head against one another in the NBA Summer League tonight on ESPN at 7 o'clock. I'll be watching. I want to see what Brandon wants to, what Brandon will do in an NBA uniform. I know Summer League is kind of like diet NBA. It's not really the G League. It's it's like a half step up from G League, but it's not really the NBA. It's like diet Mountain Dew when you're really wanting the Mountain Dew. Give me give me that real good stuff. But look, Brandon, it's for, for for Brandon. It is the next step up. It's the next step up for Brandon. And actually, I think you you have a couple of uh, Alabama guys tonight. As I'm looking over the over the lineup, you're seeing okay. Yes, 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 yes. Golden State is at Sacramento. So at nine o'clock, you're gonna have a double header back to back. Uh, you're going to go Brandon Miller at 7 o'clock, and you're going to go Keon Ellis at 9 o'clock with the Sacramento Kings. And in between there, you'll have a little Colin Sexton with the Utah Jazz. Now, Utah not going to be on ESPN. But you've got a couple of Alabama guys, Summer League, getting started up basically today. Uh, and so, you know, it's a great time to assimilate or see how the guys predict how the new rookies and some of the younger players will play in the NBA I encourage you guys, 7 o'clock tonight, Brandon Miller versus Victor Wembanyama. And I'm going to be watching that. Yes, ma'am, Miss Julian. Let's go. Brandon is exactly right. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, spotlight on Victor Wembanyama, a lot of spotlight on uh, on Brandon Miller, and there's going to be spotlight on basically head-to-head. But don't let that fool you. Don't let that. Don't get wrapped up in head-to-head between those two guys. Victor Victor is a dead gum unicorn. He can dunk the basketball without even jumping. He's seven foot four. He's seven foot four. He and Brandon have different, have a similar but different goals. I think Victor Wimbanyama uh, is after kind of a generational talent career path. I think Brandon Miller wants to take over the league and wants to show that he can be one of the premier players in the league. Uh, Brandon looks like a lot of the great players that we've already seen in the league over the last probably 10 years, and I'm really, really looking forward to him kick off his NBA career tonight. Um, so uh, you're going to see that tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN. And then at 9 o'clock, uh, the Sacramento Kings will take on the Golden State Warriors, and you will see our man Keon Ellis, who just re-signed uh, a two-way contract with the Sacramento Kings. Muhammad is the most commonly used name on earth. Read a book for one. Last topic, and we're going to Twitter. Oh, my gosh. What happened over the weekend? 
what in the world happened over the weekend with with Twitter? All of our favorite app. Look, I use Twitter. Uh, I use Twitter at an incessant rate uh, because of our news cycle. I use Twitter because I'm always following Sean Sharani. I'm always following Adrian Wojnarowski. I'm always following Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport and basically anybody who everybody who's tweeting uh, about news. I'm following them because I'm trying to keep up with the news and trying to bring it to you guys. Trying to develop opinions and bring you news right there for BamaCentral.com. You can read. all all of the news that we're bringing you on BamaCentral.com. But what in the world happened to Twitter over the weekend? Interesting weirdness. Okay, first off, Elon Musk, um, did you not pay a bill? That might have been it. Um, now, granted, as you listen to this portion, I am not a tech uh, expert by any means. I don't really understand what happened on Twitter over the weekend. Well, I understand what I think I understand. I understand that Elon Musk was essentially cleaning up servers or – and moving moving data to different servers. And so Elon uh, essentially puts out the, we are rate scaling. We're only going to let you see 600 tweets or 800 tweets. Uh, and if you're verified, if you've paid, uh, if you've paid for, for Twitter, you can see more. And so obviously it's a little bit of a scheme to, to get you to pay for Twitter blue, um, which I don't know is an inherent bad thing, but whew, Elon, man, things got out of control. And it was just, it was just, one, Elon lied. It was not rate scaling. It was not rate scaling. It was something broken in the back end or maintenance in the back end. He could have just said, Twitter's having maintenance. Twitter's having maintenance. Be back online in 12 hours. Be back online in four days, whatever the case may be. Uh, but Elon instead tried to use it as a marketing ploy, as a tool to get people to sign up for Twitter Blue. Uh, Elon, you're a one weird dude. You're, you're one weird dude. First, Elon, you're trying to fix something that's not really broken. Twitter, uh, even before you took it over, wasn't really broken. Yes, there was a little too much censorship, in my opinion, of uh, some opinions. Uh, but, 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 but I think that really Twitter as a large space, as a large, as an entity, has been largely working for, for, for several years. Uh, it's been working in my field, for my field, uh, for, for several years. And look, I know when Elon took over originally a lot of... <sighs> A lot of crazy, a, a lot of, uh, let me say it nicely, a lot of liberals basically said, oh, he's going to ruin Twitter. He's going to ruin Twitter. This is the worst thing in the world. Well, I have not experienced, um, oh my gosh, Elon ruined Twitter up until this past weekend. I was like, oh my gosh, you finally broke it, Elon. You finally took what was a good thing and you broke it. Uh, so look, I think that uh, what happened was a broken thing or something that was working in the back end of Twitter with the, uh, with the engineers as they're... Uh, working out whatever rate scaling was, uh, were cleaning up their servers. I think they were. Kind of, I honestly think that they were cleaning up some bot accounts, cleaning up some some fake accounts, probably over the weekend. Uh, and so Elon probably was trying to do something positive. It blew up in his face, and he it turned it into a marketing ploy, trying to get you to set up sign up for Twitter Blue. And I think that backfired in his face as well. So Elon, come on, man, leave Twitter alone. It's it's, it's working well. It's wor it's 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 important to my job. <laughs> I know it's not like vital. It's not vital to the world or anything like that. It's not vital to life or death, but it is kind of important to my, for my job uh, when news breaks. Twitter's usually off in the first place to find it, so uh, I am living on Twitter, and Elon, please don't uh, please don't <laughs> mess with our living space here on the social media app that is Twitter. Alright, so we've had a lot of fun today. I appreciate everybody jumping in and joining us on the comments. We had Julian and James joining us on the comments on Facebook side of things. Everybody who watched us as well, we appreciate that. Tell a friend about the program, the Joe Gaither Show on on Bama Central, and we appreciate Matthew Gibson for putting out a new logo, uh, putting out a couple editions of a new logo. Matthew putting out a new logo. You'll be seeing that everywhere going forward. That's our friend from the Blue Collar Unplugged podcast. Make sure you listen to Blue Collar Unplugged as well. Subscribe to them on Spotify, Apple Music, and everywhere you get your podcasts. We're all having a lot of fun on Bama Central. Tomorrow on the show, we're going to be joined by Caden Jones, a linebacker from North Carolina. He's a commitment in the 2024 class, Alabama wide receiver, or excuse me, Alabama linebacker, goodness gracious, Alabama linebacker commit in the 2024 class. We'll talk to Caden Jones tomorrow out of North Carolina. So that'll be the pro plan for tomorrow. I look forward to being to hanging out with you guys tomorrow. Julian, thanks so much for your comments. James as well, thanks for your comments. Hope y'all have a great day. This has been the Joe Gaither Show right here on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. <laughs>